Hey everybody, I am finally getting around, as promised, to uh, do a quick tutorial and hopefully a quick playthrough of how Feudum, the solo game, works. This is, uh, uh, this was a, actually a, sec a separate secondary Kickstarter that was done after the Kickstarter for the base game of Feudum. The solo version, um, as designed by J.J. Honeycutt, I believe, uh, is called the Queen's Army Expansion. The actual solo game has not been released yet. Uh, it's probably going to be shipping later this month. It's, I'm talk it's now May of 2018. So it's either shipping later this month or more, more likely next month sometime, um, assuming no other snafus uh, hold it up. Uh, but in any event, uh, let's get to it. So, um, you basically play the game the way you normally play the game. You are playing against the Queen, uh, Queen Anne, who is this gal over here who, who oversees the Nobles Guild. And, uh, let's, let's actually start by taking a look at her side of the board. So she actually has not only three pawns like we do, but she also has, she actually has five pawns. She works with these first three green pawns initially, and then if she still has to migrate a pawn, um, she'll then start migrating these black pawns. Now the black pawns are particularly dangerous because if they're attacking either you or something else, um, then they just win the battle automatically. There's no two ways about it. So um, you really want to try to end the game quickly uh, so that you don't actually get these on the board. So anyway, the queen starts with these five pawns. The queen doesn't start with any goods, no shillings, no nothing. The queen, in fact, no, uh, no influence markers either. The queen, when she needs influence markers, just takes them right from the supply. When she has to pay shillings, she's paying shillings right out of the supply, uh, out of the bank. So uh, nothing's really costing her. She will accumulate goods and shillings and influence markers and probably region tiles and other things, maybe vessels over the course of the game. But those are only used for endgame scoring for her. And we'll talk about that when we get to endgame scoring. It's not very complicated. But uh, the most important thing to note is that the queen starts with nothing other than her first five pawns. Three green, two black. Okay, now there is a special die uh, in, the, in this version called the fate die. And it, it's basically a die that has four sides with a direction on it, north, south, east, and west. And the, and the six sides are divided into two uh, pushes push symbols, two pull symbols, and two trade symbols, so that any time you need to have a direction or you have to choose a guild randomly, you just roll that die. Uh, so I am just going to pick a saltpeter, and I'll pick a sulfur. This is the way the normal game starts. She doesn't pick three goods, only you do. Uh, I'll put it in my wine barrel, and uh, I don't know, I'll just take an iron. What's happening here is, is that, first of all, the queen rolls uh, the fate die to determine a direction, north, south, east, or west. She rolls one of her uh, pawns to, to choose a guild, and she rolls the progress die to choose a region. What the computer rolled for her was a queen, was a noble, um, a uh, roll the north symbol and roll on the region die on the progress die roll the mountains symbol and so therefore for the queen's initial placement randomly her noble pawn is placed in the northernmost location in the mountains region then you roll the fate die and the and the progress die twice to determine where the behemoth should be placed in this case it's going in the northernmost location in the Badlands, and where the queen's horse should be placed. In this case, it looks like it's the northernmost uh, location in the sea area. Uh, so these are the three pieces 
that initially get placed on the board, aside from all the goods that get placed as part of standard setup, along with the location tiles as well. So the horse won't come into play until later on. The behemoth is basically a stand-in for the queen's husband, the king. King, I think it's King Daniel, isn't it? Uh, the idea here is that, that Queen Anne is out to murder her husband, the king. So uh, for the first half of the game, essentially, the queen is after the behemoth to kill it. If the queen never actually gets to kill the behemoth, then by the time the third epic comes around, the queen just gives up on the behemoth and then goes whole hog after you. So essentially the idea here is that the queen is out to kill the behemoth and once it either kills it or the third epic rolls around, then the queen will, will basically send all of its forces after you. Um, and then you'll be dead. <laughs> this is a, from what I can see, this is an incredibly difficult solo variant to win. There are five decks of Automa cards. So if we take a look at those decks, there are five decks. Each deck, each deck consists of ten different cards. And um, the first deck of ten cards basically um, is used for the queen's first action. The second deck is used for the queen's second action. The third deck for the queen's third action. And then the fourth action. And then if the queen ever takes an extra action, that's when the fifth deck is used. So uh, these decks are actually numbered, so there's a specific deck for each turn uh, for, that the queen might take. So I can actually show you what these decks look like. Now these aren't, these are just showing you what cards are in the decks. They're not showing you, these are just sorted in alphabetical order. They're not showing you how the decks have actually been shuffled. My program takes care of all that. But you can see that the, a lot of the AI here is controlled by the frequency with which any particular deck contains a particular type of card. So, for example, in the, fir in the first, in the queen's first turn of any um, of any round of play, you could see that more often than not she'll start to do a migrate action, but um, some of the time she'll do an influence or a guild action, and then more rarely she'll do an improve or a move. And it's unlikely that you'll get all through, through all ten cards uh, in this game. I think uh, I mean that basically covers ten rounds of play. If for some reason you are, are able to survive beyond 10 rounds of play, then you would just shuffle the decks. But I think that's unlikely, unless you get really good at this solo game. As you can see in the second um, turn that the queen takes, she's, gonna, she's more heavily leaning toward guild actions, improve actions. Um, she, these uh, influence migrate move and, and this particular move action and she also has a disperse action I'll talk about that in a second but you can see these are labeled with an asterisk okay I had to restart my program because for some reason the cards weren't displaying properly so I fixed that so the second turn the queen leans more toward a guild action maybe an improve or a move action um, the queen never does a defend action uh, you can see that none of these decks contain a defend card, but the queen also has a separate action called a disperse action, and um, we'll talk about that when the time comes. I was mentioning uh, that some of these cards have an asterisk on them. Those are cards that um, show this sulfur symbol in the corner. When the queen actually uses one of these actions, she immediately does another action as if she was as if she were performing a sequential action. Um, so she'll move right to the next deck after she does this action, goes to the next deck and does her third action right then and there. Um, so she does a back to back sometimes. The third turn is very heavily leaning toward the conquer action. And then after that, she'll lean toward influence. And after that, she'll lean toward improve. Then the fourth deck, you can see that a couple of these are also uh, also have an asterisk. Those are cards where the queen, where there's a symbol for a saltpeter in the corner. If the queen is using one of those actions, that tells you that she is then going to take an extra action when it's her next turn. 
and she'll draw from this fifth deck to uh, perform an extra action in that particular case. And the fifth turn is uh, basically, so this one leans toward improves, as you can see, and moves. Um, but every so often it'll do attacks or a harvest or an explore or something like that. Um, and then, as I said, these are all the extra actions over here. So basically, the decks control the frequency with which the queen uh, performs a certain type of action during a certain part of the round. Okay, so now you know how that works. Now, these, these decks, as I said, are all shuffled, so we don't know which ones are going to come out first. But it does help to know what's in each of these decks because as the queen plays certain cards, you'll know if there's a, perhaps a, a, a higher chance that she'll play a certain type of action in the on her next turn or something like that. So you could use that information, I suppose, uh, if you wanted to use it uh, for helping your game. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to bother because, as, like I said, I haven't played the game well enough, no, long, you know, enough to know how to play this game well. Uh, the solo game, I should say. I can play the base game fine. Um, but whatever, be that as it may. Okay, so the queen has now uh, put out, like I said, a random pawn. We, uh, she pl randomly places the behemoth, her king, her husband, the king, and randomly places her horse, which won't come into play until she either kills the behemoth or round three comes around. One very important thing to note, um, and it all has to do with these actions back here that the queen's going to take whenever she pulls a card from one of these decks. For example, the queen is ever going to do a conquer action. If the queen is unable to do a conquer action according to the rules that it follows, then it performs a migrate action. If it can't perform a migrate action, then it performs a move action. And, then, and if it can't perform a move action, it then performs a conquer action. So basically, conquer, migrate, move, in that order, are the three actions the queen will take if she's taking any one of those actions and that particular action fails. You'll see that uh, when, when I do the, the walkthrough as well, because there will be plenty of times, for example, when the queen perhaps draws a conquer card and can't perform a conquer action, uh, maybe because she doesn't occupy the same location as something she could pot potentially attack, and therefore she'll then try a migrate action. And if she can't do that, because maybe all five of her pawns are out, she'll then perform a move action instead. Similarly, harvest, tax, and explore, in that order, are the three actions she uh, takes if any one of those fails. So, for example, if she has to do a tax action and she can't do it because she doesn't rule a city, then she'll try the explore action. If she can't do the explore action because she doesn't rule an outpost, she'll then do try the harvest action. And then if she can't do the harvest action because she doesn't rule a farm, she'll try the tax action. So obviously you only try all three, and only if all three fail do you give up. But it's unlikely that all three are going to fail. It's possible. And it may happen in the course of our playthrough, but it's most of the time it's pretty unlikely. Lastly, improve and influence basically toggle if she can't do one or the other. So if the queen ever draws an improve card and can't do it, she'll then try to do an influence action instead. If she draws an influence card and can't do it, she'll then try to do an improve action instead. So it's important to know how those defaults work so that if she ever fails at a particular uh, command for one reason or another, she'll try something else instead. So um, only in rare situations will the queen be completely unable to do something when it's her turn. First, we'll start with the migrate action. It's going to basically migrate a, a green pawn if she can, and if she can't, she'll migrate a black pawn. Um, in the same way that she did this first migrate, you roll the dice, you figure out where they're going to go, uh, you know, the northernmost, easternmost, southernmost, or westernmost uh, location within any one of the six regions, and that's where she migrates her pawn. It is important to note, however, that any time you roll a pawn 
to de determine what guild the queen is going to use. She is always going to try for a different guild so that she become so that she can spread her guild mastery um, across all six of the guilds. Only if she's the guild master of all six guilds will she uh, not bother rerolling. The same rule is going to apply when she builds feudums as well. She always wants to try to become the guild master of another guild if possible, either uh, when she's migrating a pawn or when she's building a feudum. But we'll get to the feudums uh, a little bit later. Okay, so that's my great action. It's pretty simple. Most important thing to understand is that uh, she wants to have a unique face for the pawn that she brings, every new pawn that she brings out. And the black pawns get migrated after the green pawns. And only once her, once all five of her pawns are on the board, obviously, then she won't do a migrate action any longer. So if she ever tries, pulls a migrate card, she'll then immediately skip and try the move action instead based on those default actions I just spoke about a few minutes ago. All right, so uh, if the queen draws a move card, then it's going to move. Now, it, the way it moves, is varies depending upon whether or not she's either she's either going to be after the behemoth initially like i said and only if she has already killed the behemoth or epic three comes around does she then leave that mode of play and then come after you so when, whichever comes first killing the be her killing the behemoth or epic three that's when she changes her moving strategy so when she, in the beginning of the game, when she's after the behemoth, if she gets pulls a move card, then she basically moves all of her pawns on the board two spaces heading toward the, toward the behemoth. Now, not the horse. I'm not, the horse is excluded. The horse doesn't come into play until the behemoth is dead or Epic Three comes around. But uh, for every pawn the queen has on the board, she's going to move the, each one of those pawns two spaces toward the behemoth, wherever it happens to be. How does the queen move her on the board? Well, the queen follows all of the routes on the board as if she has complete control over all routes. She doesn't use vessels. Whenever she has to move two spaces toward the behemoth, she uses whatever routes are there that gets her that as close as possible to get to reaching wherever whatever location the behemoth is in. So right now, for example, if the queen if the queen pulled a move card and had to move her pawn toward the behemoth, she would move this pawn two spaces from here to here because there's a flying route, and then from here to here because there's a road route. Um, but uh, like I said, the queen doesn't use vessels of any sort. It just follows all the routes that are on the map, including ferry boat routes. So she has complete control over all routes regardless of what vessel she owns, regardless of whether there's vessels in the Alchemist Guild. She just uses every route possible to get to where she wants to go. If the queen has already killed the behemoth, or it's Epic Three or later, now the queen changes her strategy and it's after you. So in that case, um, when it's time, when the queen is after you, she ignores the behemoth, assuming it's not already dead. If it's if she does kill it, it's just removed from play completely. Um, but aside from that, first she moves the horse three spaces toward you, your closest pawn. So the horse moves three spaces using all routes available to it. And then the queen moves all of her other pawns three spaces toward the, ho the horse. So essentially everything's ganging up toward uh, the pawn that's nearest the horse. Uh, so in, during that part of the game, you basically want to stay as far away from the horse as possible. That's the idea. I should point out, when I use the term nearest, it's always using the fewest possible steps to get to where, uh, where you happen to be. So you can't judge uh, nearest by looking at what location is physically close to another. You basic, she basically just wants to take the fewest number of steps to get where she's going. And anytime it's moving around the board, if it happens to come, come across a good on its way, it always pilfers. Okay, influence action's an easy one. You basically add one of her uh, influence markers from the supply. Um, 
not from her personal supply, but from the bank, if you will, um, and to every one, every location that's occupied by one of her pawns, um, where obviously you, it's legal to place an influence marker. But uh, the important point is that they come from the supply first. Only if the supply is exhausted do you then draw from her personal supply. Um, for example, any possible influence marker she may have earned because she, uh, oh, perhaps because she traded with the, at the Knights Guild randomly on an earlier turn, for example. If she's doing an improve action, she'll always improve a town to a feudum first. Then she'll improve a, if she can't do that, she'll improve a farm to a town. And if she can't do that, then she'll improve an outpost to a farm. As I said earlier, uh, if she is upgrading a town to a feudum, she is going to choose a feudum randomly that will give her uh, the guild master position of a guild she's not already the guild master of. So if she can't do a normal improve, then she tries to tend a landscape, assuming she has a surf on the board. Again, she randomly picks one of the region tiles she owns, assuming she owns one. Uh, she has to have a surf somewhere on the board. If she has multiple surfs, you randomly pick, choose one. Uh, so you're doing a lot of random choosing in this game. And when she does tend the landscape, given the choice of whether to collect resources or not, she always collects resources, and she'll always pay one to you as the ruler of the location. If she's doing an explore action, she draws one royal writ card from the deck. If she draws a mandate card, then those will always score her one point at the end of the game. Charters will score her whatever the charter will norm, would normally score. Uh, she doesn't have to have a king seal like you do to seal it. She just gets the points from it. Once the queen uh, has drawn three royal writs, then she stops doing the explore action altogether. So. First of all, she'll only do an explore action if she's ruling an outpost, following the normal rules. Uh, the harvest action, uh, the queen, uh, assuming the queen rules a farm, she always uses the farm that contains the most goods, assuming it doesn't contain ten or more goods, following the normal rules of the base game. Um, and then she draws the correct number of goods from the haversack. She always uh, randomly chooses uh, takes um, favors or kickbacks uh, following normal rules and uh, whatever goods she randomly draws go into her supply because that, those will be used for end game scoring for her. Um, and when she does uh, do an harvest action she always flips over her or any rosary bead she has to king seals. The tax action, she basically draws the appropriate number of sh uh, shillings based on how many towns and feudums she owns, and those go into her personal supply. If she is, pulls a conquer card, and you could see those all happen, I think, for the most part during her third turn uh, in any round, um, then she will first try to kill the behemoth if, she is, if she's after the king. So if she's in that kind of mode where she wants to try to kill the king, uh, because it's prior to Epic 3 and she hasn't yet killed the behemoth, then that's what she wants to do first, uh, assuming her pawns occupy the location where the behemoth happens to be. Um, if she is successful in killing the behemoth, she earns 11 points for doing that. And like I said, the behemoth is then completely removed from the game so that it can never come back into the game. Uh, if she can't conquer the behemoth and she happens to be in a space where the sea serpent is, she'll then try to kill the sea serpent. And if she does so, she'll earn two points, which I think is the normal thing you would earn if you kill a, a monster. Um, if she can't kill the sea serpent, then she'll, on uh, her third attempt, she'll try to conquer one of your feudums, assuming one or more of her pawns occupies a feudum. And if she does, she's successful at doing that, she'll score four, the normal four points. If she can't do that, she'll try to conquer one of your pawns. And then if she can't do that, she'll try to do a Star of the People action. So she is always going to either, she not only wants to try to conquer, but she wants to be able to successfully conquer. As far as attack and defense, uh, basically the queen pretty much follows the normal rules. She'll add one saltpeter for her pawn. Uh, uh, for her pawns the way you, uh, you normally can. 
Uh, if she has a Nippon, she'll add a limited saltpeter, um, just as, as in the base game. Now, in those cases, she is limited by the, the saltpeter that is in her supply. Um, however, if a black pawn is involved in the attack, like I said earlier, black pawns always win because for as far as they're concerned, they have an unlimited amount of saltpeter to uh, rely on because they'll just draw right from the supply. So if you're up against a black pawn, you're dead. Whatever, whatever the queen is after at that point, she's going to get. Um, the queen never uses the military service track. She doesn't have to be on that track. She will never lose points for, uh, for building feudums the way you will. Uh, and while I'm talking about that, I'll also mention that she never goes on the epic voyage track either. She doesn't care about that. Um, she basically out to kill the behemoth and then out to kill you as quickly as she possibly can. And if she can't, she'll just overwhelm you with points. She pulls a guild action card, which she'll do pretty frequently because she's going to score throughout the course of the game, you're going to roll that special die to determine whether or not she does a trade, a push, or a pull. Then you're going to roll a guild die until you can come up with a valid guild in which you can do a, a valid trade, push, or pull. Um, and then you're, she's going to basically do whatever she can do to score as many, the most points as possible. So it's basically all random. Um, obviously, she'll only do a push from a guild that, that she's the guild master of, and she'll only do a pull from a guild that she's the journeyman of. Uh, but other than that, um, when she's doing a trade action, pretty much she'll always do a trade action because uh, she always gets her money right from the bank. So she'll never be short of money. The only reason a trade action might fail is if there's nothing to trade. Uh, if, for example, if you rolled the, the Monk's Guild and all the Rosary Beads were out of it for one reason or another, um, then she'll you'll roll that die again to pull another guild. So you first determine, is she doing a trade, a push or a pull? And then you'll figure out which guild she's going to work from. If she rolls a push, for example, and maybe at that particular point, point in time she's only the guild master of one guild and she can't possibly do a push out of that guild then you re-roll the die and try again when the queen is doing a trade action there are special rules that you follow when she's trading at the merchant she buys three random goods the money comes from the bank you she but you dole out the money in the normal fashion so the guild master would still get the first first coin the journeyman would get the second the, uh, in the case of the Merchant Guild, the Church Coffer will get the third. So you follow the base game rules, but as far as money to pay for all the goods that she's buying, they come right out of the bank. Um, if she's uh, trading at the Alchemist Guild, she draws a random vessel from the Alchemist Guild. Um, if there are no vessels in the Alchemist Guild, you would re-roll the die and try to trade somewhere else instead. Um, and then if she's trading at the Nobles Guild, uh, she always takes two random seals if she can. If there's only one, she takes one. When she's doing a push or a pull, well, the alchemist, um, she's always going to give priority to, uh, to manufacturing barrels over vessels. Pushing or pulling from here to here, from the Knights Guild to the Nobles Guild, she will always uh, draw influences, ran influence markers randomly, except she won't draw her own. So this disperse action is a special action that she takes because, as you can probably tell, because all of her pawns are either always going after the behemoth or they're always aiming for the horse, eventually all of her pawns are going to sort of group up, uh, you know, gang up in, and end up together in one particular location. Um, so every so often she does a disperse action. And in that case, you basically random, you basically find the location where the, most of her pawns happen to be. Um, and if there's a tie, you roll for to break the tie. So even if there's even if she has three pawns on the board, one in three different locations, you still roll a die to determine which one disperses. And when she's dispersing, she rolls the dice again and randomly picks a new location for those pawns. So they all basically spread out to random places across the board. Um, Endgame scoring pretty much follows the normal rules, except that, as I said earlier, for every mandate the, king, the queen might have drawn along the way, it earns a point. 
and then the queen takes all of her goods that she's collected, all of her vessels she's collected, her influence markers that are in her supply, personal supply, I should say, the king's seals and rosary beads she's collected, the shillings and the region tiles. You basically count all those up and you divide by three and round down and she scores basically one point for every three items that she's accumulated over the course of the game. The uh, This is going to easily be a, a trouncing because the, like a, a, the queen plays very well. I don't have much experience playing this game, so I'm not necessarily going to be playing very well. And I'm also going to be playing pretty quickly because I just want to, I don't want this video to be too long. So uh, I may make plenty of mistakes. So um, if you do see an error in the way my program um, handles the movement of uh, uh, or the performance of one of her actions, by all means, please add a comment. But don't bother adding a comment that says, well, why'd you do that? You should have done that. I'm not thinking that carefully here. I'm just playing quickly. Okay, so anyhow, let's get it, let's get this underway. So uh, I have to bring a pawn out on the board. So I've already chosen my three random goods. The queen has randomly put out one of her pawns. The behemoth is randomly located, and her horse is randomly located. Uh, it just so happens uh, this is totally random that uh, the queen is on the opposite side of the board as the uh, horse. Not that that matters that much, um, but the behemoth happens to be close to where the queen's pawn is at the beginning of the game, that could be that could be a tough game for you right then and there because it means she's going to get to the behemoth uh, pretty quickly. So you may have to adjust your strategy uh, because you can take control of the behemoth. And maybe I'll do that um, uh, uh, in the course of this playthrough. Anyhow, i got to bring a pawn out. So um, I usually like to start with an alchemist. So I'm going to bring out an alchemist and... Uh, I guess I'll stick, just put it over here. Uh, you know, I haven't thought about what my strategy is going to be. Uh, you know, maybe I'll build feudums. I don't normally build feudums because I don't like attacking my fellow human players. But I won't mind attacking the queen, assuming I even get around to doing that. Uh, so maybe I'll just build feudums. And maybe that's one of the things I'll strive for in this game. Uh, incidentally, I should also note the queen will always go first. She always takes the first turn, so she'll be the start player, then you'll be the start player in the next round, and her, then she'll be the start player, and so forth. Okay, i got to pick my four or five actions, because I did draw a saltpeter earlier, so I'll obviously do a migrate to bring out another pawn. I'll get an influence. Uh, at some point, I'll try to do an improve. I'll try to do a guild action, and then I'll just do a repeat. Uh, to either do a repeat guild or a repeat move or repeat something or other. So I'll start with five actions. So I'm going to hit continue. Then the queen is going to draw one card from that first deck of ten, and we're going to see what her first action is going to be. She draws a move card. So she moves two spaces toward the behemoth. Okay, and she pilfers goods along the way. So you can see she just grabbed a food, I believe, uh, that was sitting there. Was that a food that she picked up? It was, yes. So she already has one item in her collection, a food. So it's my turn. I will start with a migrate action. I, I like being the guild master of the merchant guild, too, because I like having the control over the flow of goods from here to here and the flow of goods from here to here. So I think I'm going to bring out a merchant pawn. And uh, now I could put this in any starting location because I have an alchemist on the board. Should I put it there? I don't know what it matters. Okay, like I said, I don't want to think, think too much. Okay, the queen's doing a guild action, so she randomly is pushing from the noble guild. So she randomly draws two king seals, and whatever they happen to be, they go right into the monk's guild, and now she's going to score um, six points for that, because uh, I guess it's based on the fact that this sums up to, what, more than nine or more points. Uh, two plus four plus five, yeah, easily more than nine. So she just scored six points. She doesn't have any reeves. She doesn't have any player discs. 
So she never play, worries about placing reads or anything like that. Okay, it's my turn again. I will do, well, it's my turn. I will do an influence action, and I'll just influence uh, here, and I'll influence, uh, where's my other pawn? Here. Okay, queen's action, third turn. She does a conquer, but she fails, and so now she's going to try to do a migrate. So she migrates a pawn over here. So she failed against the behemoth because it was only one to one. Remember when you're when she's attacking the behemoth, the behemoth has a defense of one. She her pawn gives her an attack of one. So she didn't win that attack, so she tried something else instead. So she did a migrate, and she randomly migrated, in this case, a monk pawn. Remember, she would never have migrated on another noble pawn. She would always try to become the guild master of a different guild. So in this case, she brought it on, out a monk pawn and went into this location randomly, which is, happens to be, I guess, the northernmost or the westernmost uh, forest reach, uh, location. If you want to kind of think about how it ties back to uh, the roll of the dice. Okay, my turn again. I'll do an improve action. So I guess I'm going to improve this farm into a town. So there goes my iron, and I just get a region tile from the forest area. She is now going to do a disperse action. So one of these pawns is going to randomly go somewhere else. So randomly she chose that pawn, and then she rolled her dice the way she normally would, and she moved it over there. Normally she takes the location where most of her pawns happen to be, but if there's a tie, as there was in this case, she rolls to pick one uh, location randomly, and then all those pawns get moved into other random locations. To do a guild action, I think I'll start by pushing from the Alchemist Guild. And I will build, there's a saltpeter over here. Uh, I think I'll build a flying machine so I can always get to it. Uh, so I might want to actually buy that flying machine at some point and I'll build a bar and I'll make a barrel of crud. So those are the only things I can make. So that's going to score me um, what five points. And then I have the option of placing a reeve. But since I'm kind of going through the going the feudum route, I guess I'm going to decline that for now at least. I don't even know if I'm going to get around to attacking her. Um, so I'm not even going to worry. I may I may just lose because of feudal disloyalty. But uh, this is just a demonstration anyhow. So no, for now, I'm just not going to bother with a reeve. Oh, so she, you can notice that she did draw one of these cards that has a saltpeter on it. So she did take a, separate, a second action. She drew an explore card. That failed. She then tried a harvest card, and that failed. So what did she just do? Um... She first tried an explorer. She then tried a harvest. She failed all three. Uh, so these are the way. These are all the default actions if you fail one. So in this particular order, she she failed explorer because she doesn't um, she hasn't done an influence yet. So she doesn't rule any locations. So she failed. She couldn't do an explorer because she doesn't rule an outpost. She couldn't do a harvest because she doesn't rule a farm. She couldn't do a tax because she doesn't rule a uh, an outpost. So, there's an example of when the queen totally fails and doesn't do anything. It doesn't happen that often, but it happened here. Uh, okay, for my last action, I'm going to obviously do a repeat. And I'll repeat the guild action. And maybe I'll just go buy that... Uh, should I buy that flying machine? No, you know what? Um, what uh, just for kicks, I'll trade at the at the Knights Guild. I'll take my three influence markers, and I'll and I'll take control of the Behemoth. So this is allowed, even though the Behemoth is on the board and is sort of in play because it's performing as the king. You can take control of it in the normal fashion. So um, I am going to take control of the Behemoth. And that way, I can try to keep it away from wherever the queen happens to be. So I can delay the point at which she's going to come after me. I don't think that's going to help me that much, 
but it might help a little. So I'm going to grab the BMF and um, I'll, I guess I'll just put it here. I don't think it, yeah, I'll just put it there. Okay, Nurse Pond's phase. Um, I do have a sulfur, but I think I'll save it for now and I'll just use food. So I'll pay two food. Uh, you roll the progress die in the normal fashion, and now we're into round two. And now I don't have saltpeter, so I'm only going to be doing four actions. So I will do a move and an influence, and um, I, I want to buy a couple king seals. So maybe I'll do a tax action to get some more shillings, and I'll do a guild action. Okay. Not sure if that's, lo if a, that's a good logical choice, but whatever. Let's move on. Okay, it's now I'm so I'm now the start player. And so for my first turn, I'll just do a tax, and that should get me three shillings, and it does, because I rule two towns. Now the queen is doing a guild action. She rolls her dice, and she is going to what? Trade at the monks guild. So she grabs a rosary she, she rosary seal um, and she gets the she would randomly choose between the lowest and the highest following the normal rule she happened to well I think she got the lowest one did she she got a two yeah okay um, my turn again so let me go after and grab some king seals so let's do a guild and I'll trade at the noble guild and there's only two seals Ugh. you know I'm a little bit lucky here that she did she could have done a push just now and I would not have any King Seals to get. So I got a little lucky. I didn't even realize that. Um, but uh, I'll take it. So I'll pay uh, six shillings for two Seals. And her turn. She is doing a Guild action. What's she going to do this time? She's pushing from the Monk's Guild to the Farmer's Guild. So she, she just did two Guild actions in a row. So it's good that I grabbed the King Seals when I did. Otherwise, they would have certainly been gone. I guess we're going to do a move, and then we'll do an influence. So I'll move. Yeah, let's kind of head toward the eastern part of the board. So let's bring you over here and over here. There are no goods. The only thing that I could have potentially pulled was down here, but... Um, I want to sort of get some place where I can, because uh, the Badlands is still available, so I can, if I'm going to do an improve, I want to at least score some points for it. Um, I'll bring you down this way, because you notice that if she did a move, this pawn is two spaces away, so this pawn would reach the behemoth. So she's two actions away from basically conquering the behemoth. Uh, so I want to try to move the behemoth away from where her pawns happen to be. And I only really have to worry about her doing another migrate or, or a disperse. Uh, that's, that's how she might get really close. Well, when I wouldn't see her coming, so to speak. Uh, there are no guilds for me to pilfer, so I'll just continue. Her turn. So now she's doing an influence. I would have thought she would have drawn another conquer. But it just happened to, just the way the program shuffled the decks. So she just influences wherever she has a pawn. So she drew the influence markers from the supply. Notice that uh, she still does not have any influence markers in her personal supply. And the, the supply of markers is now down to 13. Uh, I'm not going to actually do a count, but there's, what, two here. And, yeah, you get the idea. There's two on the board, I think, and whatever. Okay, uh, my turn, I'm doing an influence. So I guess I'll, uh, this is probably where I'm going to do my first, I'm guessing where my first June's going to go, I suspect. Um, yeah. And do I want to reinforce this location? Well, She's not in that neighborhood, so um, I'm going to save my influence markers because I only have two right now. So I'm going to save what I have and not bother reinforcing my influence here. 
So we'll now move into the Nourish Ponds phase for round two. Oh, no, no, she's getting another play. She gets another card, so she's doing an improve action. She builds her first feudum. And so she builds, this time, a noble, uh, she built a knight feudum so that she could become a guild master in another location. So she's always going to choose in a, a, or re-roll until she gets a, a guild that she can uh, take over uh, that she doesn't already have control over. Okay, into the Nourish Pawns phase. So do I want to use that sulfur? Uh, yeah, okay, I'll use the sulfur. So I'll feed the, the alchemist with the sulfur, and this guy's getting fed with food. Of course, the queen never has to worry about feeding her pawns. It uh, goes without saying. Um, and now we're into round three. So uh, at least I'm achieving my goal of keeping the game moving along quickly. All right, I'm going to do um, another move. And so I want to build my first few as well. So I'll, oop, I'll do an improve. And I'd like to grab that flying machine. So I'll do a tax action to get some more cash and a guild action. I still don't have a saltpeter. She's the first play. She's the start player. She does an improve action. This time she improves to a town because she can't improve a town to a few. Them. So um, she improves over there. Uh, I think I will now do an improve action. Yeah, and I guess I'm going to improve this town. This seems like the logical choice. Uh, I'll just ch take my give up my worst king seal so now do I want to take over another guild or do I want to reinforce what I have because right now what do I have here one sat status star so she could easily take over this guild and this one I'm a little stronger at so I think I'm going to build an alchemist feudum just so I can strengthen my control over this guild maybe that's not the smartest thing to do but as soon as she migrates, she, you know, it's a matter of time. She'll take over that guild pretty quickly. So I want to try to keep what I got. Uh, so she would, she's randomly pushing from the monk's guild. She puts another feed on the chickens. She scores six points because the um, rosary beads are getting up there. Oh, she got a five there initially or just now, whatever. So her total is up, up to nine already, easily worth six points. I'll get some cash. I'll do a tax action. Oh, so now I'm getting four shillings because of my feudum. She is doing another conquer. I don't think there's any place she can conquer. So she is doing a migrate. And she randomly migrated a pawn over here. It just so happened it happened to be a location where she already had another pawn. But it, uh, like I said, she doesn't normally follow those rules the way we do. She puts her pawns randomly on the board. And now she's the guild master of the farmer guild. So you can see she's already the guild master of four guilds. Uh, it's impossible for me to compete with her, at least there. I'd have to really focus my game, but I'm not going to worry about it. So I think I'll do a guild action and grab that flying machine like I said I would. So I'll trade at, I'm just going to trade up here at the Alchemist Guild. Um, and I'm going to grab that flying machine. Did I just say submersible? I meant flying machine. Oh, and I paid myself, so it only cost me two. She tries to do a harvest. She can't do that. She tries to do a tax. She, uh, she can't do a tax. So my last turn, I'm going to do a move action. Okay, so I'll grab the, my flying machine. Oh, I'd like to get this sulfur. So I'm going to grab my flying machine and bring it up here and then use that to transport myself over here. Okay, and I'll pilfer that I think in a second, but now I don't want to move you. I'll bring you down here to join the behemoth just to help with the behemoth's defense in case the queen happens to target happens to do a series of actions that, that brings her closer to wherever happens to, where the beam happens to be. 
and I can pilfer this saltpeter. Nourish pond space. So I only have food available. Uh, my food is down to two. I got to keep an eye on that. And now we're into the dawn of epic two. So you can see that she's now starting to take her lead she, because she she rules uh, four guilds as a and I'll, I only rule two. So she grabbed twenty points and I only grabbed ten. We're both in the same number of regions and I've already lost three points because I've totally ignored the fact that I'm I've feudal disloyalty to worry about. And it's not going to be a good game for me. Okay, round four. Oh, I have a saltpeter now, so I can do five actions. So let's make sure I do a guild and a repeat. I'll try to get, do another improve. I'll try to do another move. It's always good to have a move card uh, in case you got to get out of the way wherever the queen happens to be. And uh, I've got two influence markers, so I'll do an influence action. Okay. So is that good? Move, influence, proof. Yeah. Okay. Who's the start player? I am. Okay. Uh, I'll start with an influence action. So I'll put one here. And where are you? Over here. Not, and that's it. I'm out of influence markers. Uh, she does a migrate. Oh, so uh, her first black pawn has come on the board. So now she's got four pawns. One, two, three. The three green pawns. And the first black one has come onto the board. And now you can see she is vying to try to get into the merchant guild. Because she's already the guild master everywhere else. Uh, I'll do improve. Yeah. Good choices there. Uh, now, do I want to try to... What do I got here? I do have four status stars. She has two status stars. And because she can influence at a whim, because she just draws markers from the supply, see, it's a matter of time before she can overtake me. So I, I think I'm going to build a merchant feud just because I, I feel strongly right now about reinforcing what I have. So I do have three region tiles already in my collection. She's doing a move action and she's going to do a sequential after that. So she's moving toward the behemoth. Everything moves two spaces, including this black pawn. That's going to move as well. Two spaces toward the behemoth. And now she's doing a sequential action. She's doing a conquer, which she can't do because she doesn't occupy. Oh, what? No, she was. Uh, she uh, she tried to conquer my feudum but failed. So then she. Uh, okay. So what happened here? She tried to uh, attack my feudum, but she was not able to do that because she only has one pawn there. So then she defaulted to trying to do a migrate action instead, and she brought her fifth and final pawn out. Um, and this, and now it's an alchemist. So uh, she is vying for control over here as well. She's got only one star, however, and I have five. So I'm doing okay there. Um, but now you can see she's in all six guilds. I think I'll do a guild. And I will... Let's get goods back and I'll, I'll do a push from the merchant. So what do we want to get up here? I'd like to get more influence markers, obviously, because I don't have any up there. So I will definitely push. Well, i got to worry about points here, too. I was thinking of two saltpeter and a sulfur. But a, let me bring out a wood and an iron, because that guarantees me at least five points. For filling two bins and now I'll bring out one saltpeter and one sulfur just so I can get at least one influence marker out and then I'll worry about more later so that got me five points 
And again, I'm going to decline to do a reeve. And this may come back to haunt me. I probably should be doing reeves. Because I, I don't know if I'm going to get around to attacking her. But what's she going to do? She's going to do attacks. Can she do attacks? Yes, she can. She rules a town. So she uh, gets three shillings. And it's my turn. So you can see, it's very, the, the, the computer plays pretty quickly. Uh, that makes it very nice for me to play this game. Uh, but if you're playing with the cards and whatnot, and you're essentially not only playing for you, you're playing for her. You're following a set of rules, but you still have to figure out, okay, wh what, do, what, do I, what do I do? What do I take? Where do I go? You know, that sort of thing. So it's, it's not a streamlined solo game. It's, uh, it's a pretty well-built, uh, well-fleshed-out uh, solo game where you're basically playing for the queen using these Automa decks um, the way you might play for any uh, other player. I guess we're going to do a move action. And then I'll worry about the repeat. Also, oh, there's a wood down here. That would be useful. So let's come down here. I'll uh, use the flying machine. I'm just going to pill for the wood and stay, stay where I am, I think, for now. Okay, she's taking her extra action because she drew that tax with an extra action mark on it, and she is trading at the monk skill. She's grabbing another random uh, king seal. Uh, I'm sorry, a random rosary bead. And now I'm doing my repeat action, and do I want to do a, a repeat guild? I think I should do a repeat move. Yeah, let's do another move, and I'll get on the Epic Voyage track, even though I probably shouldn't, because I should be worrying about just the the uh, the military track, but so it goes. Let's I can grab the sulfur. Should I do it with the monster or do it with the pawn? I'll do it with the pawn. So let's bring you here, and then over here, and then over here. And I'll grab the sulfur. And uh, yes, I will put it in my wine barrel. Oh, and yeah, what the heck. At least I'll make up the three points I would have lost on, by not being, being on the military track. <laughs> okay, uh, so do I want to nourish with that? Uh, no, I'll, uh, I've got two food. I'll just nourish with food for now. And it's round five. No saltpeter. Uh, so I'll always choose a move. I usually like to have a guild and a repeat. Uh, you know what? I'll throw an explore. I can do an explore, can I? Yeah, I do. I rule over here. I'll just throw an explore in. What the heck? I haven't. Otherwise, I may not get any royal writs. Well, we may not even see royal writs because she hasn't done one. Yeah, she hasn't got any royal writs. So let's throw an explorer in for kicks. Okay, whose turn? Her turn. She does an influence. Uh, is that a bug? That's a bug. Uh, she just put two influence markers here, which is illegal. She does have two pawns here, but... Uh, yeah, she should not have been able to do that. So uh, I'll let it go. I'm not going to bother fixing it now, but that's a bug I have to fix. So we'll make a note of that. Okay, I will do the move action. Maybe I should be worried about this feudum. Because now she has a surf there. So she does another influence. She'll... Yeah. All right, I kind of want to bring this pawn back. there. And I guess I'll bring my BMF up here. So I'm going to sort of protect this feudum. Come on, BMF. Okay. Just trying to sort of get these spaced well. Um, there are no goods that I could pilfer, so continuing. She does an improve action. She's building another feudum. 
Now she built a farm for you. Is that what she just did? Why would she do that? Uh, when she could try to build one of these. That could be a bug. She was already the guild master of the farm. Uh, that may have been... Yeah, that probably is not good logic on my part. Uh, I should make a note of that, too. I'll, I'll, I'll worry about fixing my bugs later. I won't waste your time with it. Um, my turn, I will do... Um, well, I'm out of food, aren't I? Uh, let's go to the Merchant Guild and grab some food while well, it's cheap. Okay, she's probably going to do a conquer. Uh, she is, but she still can't conquer that few of them. She's trying. She can't conquer. She can't successfully conquer the behemoth. She tried that first. She can't kill my pawn. So she's going to do a migrate instead. Oh, she can't do a migrate. So she's going to try to do a move. Yeah, because all, all of her pawns are on the board. So here she comes toward the behemoth. So as you can see. Okay, so that was interesting. Uh, oh, maybe she was here. And then she went up here because that got her all the way over to here. And now she's one. Yeah, maybe that's what she did. Cause so, so, so she went that way to get that way. Sometimes she goes funny ways, but she also always wanted to, wants to get there in the fewest number of steps. I'll get my, uh, I'll do my explore action. So I, what do I go? I've got a bunch. Uh, these, I don't want to use these are these uh, these are the um, act the special extra the special action cards you can use. But once you use these, they're they're stuck. You, you know, they're you're, they're part of your actions for the rest of the game. So I I got I'm lucky here that I happen to draw three of them. Uh, so I guess I'm going to draw this guy. I which is not a bad choice because it looks like I'm in three. I currently rule three of these locations. That I can, from what I can see. So if I can remember to get a royal seal for it, I'll do all right. But I'll probably forget. She is doing a move action, she'll, and she'll be doing an extra action as well. So here she goes. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. So now she's ganging up on me. So let me bring these pawns over here. She tries to align them as best as possible, but now I'm kind of in a tough, tough bind here. And what do I have? I have a repeat action. I could do a repeat move. But now that she's where I am, I could throw a feast and get some extra points. And she is ahead of me, so um, if I could rally some nine points here, that would be nice. Yeah, let's. Uh, I do. Yeah, let's throw a feast. Um, the question is, where is the best way to? What's the best way to throw a feast? Oh, probably uh, a monk push. Yeah, there's still a space open, so I'll do a monk push. That'll, that's a guaranteed nine points. Six from the push, three from the feast. But now the, the chickens are all blessed in the uh, Farmer's Guild. She's doing, oh, she's doing disperse, yes! Uh, except that, except that my monster is pinning all of her pawns, so she can't do a disperse. And there's no alternate to a disperse action. Uh, so she does nothing. Oh, darn it. That would have been nice for her to do a disperse. Not good on my part. So you could see that maybe I didn't play that very well. <laughs> okay, Nourish, nourish Pond's time. Uh, I have no sulfur, so I'm just paying with food. And it's the Dawn of Epic 3 as we move along here. She just pulled ahead again, so she's now at 75 to 58. Uh, I'm still okay as far as disloyalty is concerned. That won't happen until the dawn of Epic Four, but that's right around the corner. And I'm actually in more regions than she is. 
Oh, yeah, because she's all ganged up. And she only influenced way out here. So, uh, at least I'm ahead in one area, for what it's worth. Okay, round six. Maybe I should do a defend. <laughs> Not that it's going to help. Yeah, there's no way I can... Uh, you know what, I'll just do it anyway, for the sake of it. But... Uh, We'll do a move for sure, and I'll do my guild and repeat. This is probably a waste, but whatever. My turn. I'll try to do a push from the Merchant's Guild. And I'll push a Sulfur and a Sulfur. That fills one bin, and a Food and a Food to fill a second bin. So at least it's, it's what happened. Was there not enough food? Um, I know I grabbed some food. I wasn't. I wasn't watching. I was just assuming I could. I could fill that bin. I guess I can't. So now I'm stuck. I can't push a, an iron, a wood. Can't push food. Yeah, I'm done. So I didn't get that many points after all. Four points only. I probably should. She's doing an influence action. Oh, she just took over my feudum. Yeah, I guess that was a matter of time. Yeah, so now I'm a serf. Uh, I should have reinforced that, but I was out of markers. Now I should get some markers. So let's do a repeat guild action, and I'll push from the alchemist guild. And let's make I can let's make barrels of crud. Yeah, I guess that works. So that'll fill us up as far as the Night Guild is concerned. So now I can get some influence markers. And it got me six points, and as usual, I'll decline the reef. This is so stupid. Waste a point. I waste of not getting points when I could be. Uh, improve action. She's going to be out of influence markers pretty quickly. Uh, oh, actually, she is. The supply is now down to zero. That was her last influence marker. So the only one, and she has, she collected any? She has not collected any. So they're all on the board except for the six that are in the guild. Let's do a move. I guess I should get the heck out of there. Although it would be nice to pilfer this iron. Oh, what the heck. Let's go that way, I'll take the road, come back, take the cheap way out, and just do a pilfer and grab the iron. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, maybe we'll see some action here. Oh, but she's not doing a conquer. She's doing an improve. So she builds another feudum. And again, she's building a farm feudum when she could be, you know, that's, a, again, a bug in my logic. So apologize for that. Uh, and now all I have left is my defend, which should, I didn't even use. I get a point out of it. And she is not going to be doing an extra action, but she doesn't improve. And we move into round seven. Do I have enough food? I, even, I, have a, I don't, but I have region tiles, which I am going to have to use. So we'll trade one in for a food. That should get me by for now. You can see the game is pretty well... Uh, yeah, the game is going to be over before you know it. So here it is, the Dawn of Epic Four. She is now ahead of by 120 to 77. I'm doing better than I would have expected. I thought I'd be behind by... I thought she'd be ahead by at least double. But I just lost a bunch of points for disloyalty. I'm getting... I'm getting that's going to be the death of me. I really should do a, a, a conquer. But now that all of her pawns are together, I have no chance of doing a conquer. And I'm short on food, so I don't want to bring a noble out now. Uh, this is not a good situation. I don't know, just a guild or a repeat. This is probably the last round anyway. doesn't matter. Uh, I'll do a move and a tax. Whatever.
I think this is probably the last round. She's doing a guild. She is pushing from the Night Guild. She's going to steal one of my influence markers. Five points. All right. I guess I should move out. Now that it's not my feudum anymore. Let's do a move action. And uh, let's get my merchant. Uh, I'll move you to grab the salt pier. And I guess I guess you get the monster out of there too. So I'll bring you here. And now I'll grab the salt pier. But I, don't, I think it's all too little too late at this point. She does a disperse. She will do a disperse this time. So there you, there you can see the location with all of her ponds. All the ponds scatter. All over random locations. Okay. But now she could possibly attack me over there. It just so happens. And now she's doing a sequential action. She failed the influence because she's out of influence marker. So she doesn't improve instead. Now there's a, a marker five. So it definitely is going to be the last round. A level five region tile. Um, so this, it's all basically now all over. Um, I'll just do my tax action. She doesn't improve. Another farm feudum. Uh, bad choice. Although she is the guild master of all but one guild, but she should have definitely done the. the uh, so those are just two bugs. So let me make a note of that. Uh, Feudum Guild Choice Logic has to be fixed. Not that she needs more help. Uh, against me, at least. Okay, I'll do a guild. Uh, I guess I'll just grab... Oh, there is no food to grab. I was thinking of grabbing food. What can I do here? I guess I should grab my influence markers. Huh. Not that I got to use them. Not that I, I'm out of time. I can't use them. I should do it. Just can I score some points? Can I push anything from... I can make one vessel. So that's only four points. And that would only be worth three, assuming I could do something. I guess I'll just do the four points. I'll build um, oh, whatever, another flying machine. Yeah! <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Finally, I'll add a wreath for another point. Oh, Way too little, too late. Uh, okay, let's do a repeat. Maybe I should do a repeat move just to get to another level on the Epic Voyage track. That would make sense. Let's do a repeat move. Uh, not that it matters. I can't get over there because I don't have a vessel. Just trying to see if there's any, anything that I can pilfer. I think there is. I could go this way. And grab that food for what it's worth. So I got another two points. Oh, and I get a royal writ. Not that I have, not that I have any royal seals. Uh, do I have any status stars? Do I? I still have my status stars up here. Five status stars. Yeah, that would work. What does that get me? The three shillings. Yeah. So let me use that, and I'll take three shillings. That's worth, what, a point? And now the game's all over. So I have to trade in another region tile for food. I don't think she ever got any royal reds. So what she did when... Oh, she didn't quite win by two. I thought I was going to lose two to one. And she never even got to the horse. So the horse never moved at all. 
164 to 85. That's still a trouncing for sure. Uh, look at this domination of all the guilds. Uh, I still have the lead in number of active regions. I'm happy about that. I totally blew it on, on feudal disloyalty. Man, what did I just lose? 22 points over the course of the game just on that. Okay, let's do end game scoring to see how bad it really was. Yeah, I have, I have no king seals. So there's nothing for me to seal. And, uh, 194 to 102. So, uh, let's see. I got only five points from the Epic Voyage track. Uh, I got uh, nine points through Identical Towns and uh, a couple uh, Feudum, a couple towns and an outpost. And uh, that Feudum, of course, uh, can act as a, as a, a wild. So uh, these two towns can become three towns, and I get three extra points for that. But she scored 16 points and 6, so 22 points in total for large empires. Uh, I got my 3 points for my 9 shillings, and she got 8 points for 24 collected items. Basically, she got four good, 5 goods, 11 shillings, it looks like uh, a bunch of region tiles, a couple of ro rosary beads, that sort of thing. Uh, but that's it, 194 to 102. Point was, we got through the tutorial and the quick uh, playthrough. I hope you got a lot out of this. So uh, if you are interested in learning the solo game, you got a head start. And uh, I think, yeah, with a little practice and some focus and concentration, while this is a difficult game to win, uh, it's certainly doable. Um, it's just, uh, like anything, going to take some time. Okay, thanks for watching, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.